Welcome to This Is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. I'm your host, Melissa Batchelor, and today I'm going to be talking about emotions, memory, and Alzheimer's disease. So you may have heard that Maya Angelou once said something along the lines of, people will forget what you say, they will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. And there's a reason for that, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So we can all use this concept of, of emotional memories to make new memories or to recall old ones. So we can create moments that last a lifetime around positive feelings and boost our overall mental health. And if you're a caregiver for a person living with Alzheimer's disease, understanding how emotions um, can impact your interaction with them is really important. So first, let's talk about the difference between episodic and emotional memories. So episodic memories are really just memories that we recall about a particular event. So we remember where we were, who we were with, and what happened. Emotions are also tied to memories. In fact, memories that are tied to a strong emotion, whether that's a positive or a negative emotion, tend to last longer, and they don't tend to fade as fast or disappear as quickly when compared to memories that have that where we kind of had neutral emotions. So we call th these types of memories emotional memories, but it's really any memory that reflects the emotional content of the situation. So now we'll talk about how emotions and memories are connected. So how you feel at any given moment impacts what you're going to be thinking about and vice versa. So if you're in a positive mood, you're a lot more likely to think about and recall positive memories versus if you're in a negative mood, you're you may get into what I call stinking thinking or stinking thinking. And we, that's where you tend to focus and recall and think about things that are more negative. But either of these tendencies tend to be more self-perpetuating. The good news is, is that you can't actually control what you think about. So if you find yourself in a bad mood, try thinking about a fun or a positive experience until your mood improves. Additionally, if you're in a situation that you want to remember for a really long time, if you consciously focus on how you feel in that moment, um, that's going to help you remember that event. So another example would be if you want to remember someone's name, you can make a conscious association between the feeling that you get from that person with their name and their face. And so by focusing on feelings, you're going to have an easier time finding your way back to that memory later. And then lastly, we'll talk about emotions and Alzheimer's disease. So in Alzheimer's disease, emotions remain intact. So the ability to use and understand language is going to be lost, but our nonverbal behavior often communicates how we're feeling. And even a person with very advanced Alzheimer's disease is going to be able to pick up on our emotional state. So whatever we're feeling as caregivers can be transferred to that person with Alzheimer's disease, whether we wanted it to or not. So if we're feeling happy, our nonverbal behavior tends to be more of like smiling and, and being a lot more upbeat versus if we're stressed or mad, you know, the facial expressions and body language is going to match that. And one part of the brain that remains intact is mirroring. And so whatever our emotional state is, is going to be mirrored back to us by the person we're care, caring for. So as a caregiver, just make sure that your emotional state is more on the positive side in order to have more positive interactions with the person that you're caring for. Another trick is to use music because music also impacts our emotional state and has a really powerful way to alter anybody's mood. We've all had the experience where maybe a little sad riding in the car and a really upbeat song comes on the radio and immediately we can be in a, transported into a better mood. So playing a person's favorite song is a great way to lighten their mood. And it also gives you another chance to interact in a positive way. Um, and maybe both of you will get up and dance, which will improve your ability to, um, it will build strength, endurance, and you'll have a good time while you're doing it. So thank you for tuning in today and learning more about the connection between emotions, memory, and Alzheimer's disease. And I will see you next time. Thank you for tuning in to This Is Getting Old, Moving Towards an Age-Friendly World. I'm your host, Melissa Batchelor, and if you'd like to learn more, you can check out my other episodes on my YouTube channel by either by subscribing and ringing the bell to get immediate notifications when new content comes out. In addition, you can also find the audio version of the podcast on Amazon Music, Spotify, iTunes, and Stitcher. Please feel free to leave an honest review because more reviews mean more awareness of the podcast and helps us move towards an age-friendly world. If you have a comment or a question, you can visit my website, melissabphd.com. Go to the Contact Melissa tab, and you can leave me a voice message. You never know. It might just include your question or your comment in an upcoming episode.